So I wanted to show you a 3D model of the diagram that's in your book of the digestive tract or the digestive system. In your book, it's figure 3-1. So if we start up here, you can actually see in the opening here on the side of the head, salivary gland. And you'll see the very same drawing in your book in the cheek in front of the ear, a drawing of the salivary gland. And here we can see the opening of the mouth, the tongue. I think we're all very familiar with how delightful that is when we're digesting, so let's just taste everything. And on this diagram, um, or this model, you can't see the esophagus up here because the windpipe's in front of it. But as we get lower down, you'll be able to see that. So let me get this set up just right. going to work? I think that's going to work. Okay, so if we take the ribs off, we can start to see what's going on in here. And uh, very important, but we'll take the heart out. So here's the esophagus. So that's running from the mouth. Um, when you swallow, the food passes through here. And let's temporarily take the liver off. Now, the food doesn't pass through the liver but there's an important piece of the digestive system that I'll show you in just a minute on the back of the liver. So you can see here the esophagus is emptying into the stomach and so the one-way valves, the sphincters that, that are present in the GI tract, between the esophagus and the stomach, the first one is the lower esophageal sphincter and this is the tummy. It's kind of cool if you look inside. But you can see that after food passes through the esophagus into the stomach, then it's emptying here into the entrance to the small intestine, and that sphincter would be the pyloric sphincter. I'm going to pull this off temporarily and then put it back on. So the food goes in here, you can see a cut out here of the inside of the small intestine, and it's going to pass through all of this. And remember, they are, they've given names to the beginning, the middle, and the end of the small intestine. The first part is the duodenum, the second is the jejunum, and the third is the ileum. And then, if we take this off, you can see on the back here that there was another one-way valve into the next part of the GI tract. So this fit on right here, and that would be the ileocecal valve, the one-way valve between the small and large intestine. So then food um, can go up here, we can put this guy back on. Passes through and down, and you'll see that in your diagram as well. It's blue and it goes up one side of the abdomen, crosses over, and goes down the other side. And then it's emptying into the back. Um, the end of the large intestine is emptying into the rectum and the anus. So two other important things to mention that the digested food does not pass through, but are very important in digestion. The first is the pancreas here, which lives behind the stomach and has a valve that empties into the beginning of the small intestine and helps with digestive, digestive juices. But also, if we go back here and pick up the liver, which remember was tucked in here, on the back of the liver is the gallbladder, which is also very important in releasing digestive juices, actually bile and emulsifier that helps with digestion. So this also has a duct that empties into the first part of the small intestine. Okay, let's see if I can put it all back together. Now you can have a better picture of what happens after you swallow your cheers and milk, what happens between mouth and anus in the digestive system.